art professions, introduction and fine arts. Uh, I particularly like the end of the sixth grade year um, with my students because this is where I try to put it all together. And my goal uh, in using art professions is to help kids understand what, uh, when they're looking at art, uh, to know what they're seeing uh, in art, and uh, particularly to answer those big questions of who, where, how, and why. Um, the last thing I would want someone to do is to, to make a work of art, uh, for example, a painting of a cow, and not know if it's good or not, uh, and have to ask the cow. I, you shouldn't have to ask the cow if it's good or not. You should know. And if you know what is valued, um, you know what's valuable to the group that's doing, then I think you understand it better. Um, and uh, so this, this video is to help us fill out this paper that looks like this without the photos. And um, I'm going to start here right at the top at Fine Artists. And I've got three different columns, one for title, one for who do they work for, where is the art, and what's the goal of the art. Okay, So we will start with a fine artist, and that's probably the most typical um, of them. And uh, I have a quick little video that I want you to watch uh, right in here. Oops, let's click on that. And uh, that explains what it means to be an artist. So am I, Megan. Megan Corey. Megan, how are you? So we're just going through the Toast Tour, and this is this all your work? Um, a, a lot of it. Uh, it's, I have a few friends work around. Uh -huh. um, this is kind of a new medium that I've been working with. Schwartzky uh -huh. crystals and slinkies. Oh, um, that's pretty. I like all. it. You look like you're working. I am. I, I, like, um, I like to kind of give people a sense of what it's like to be in the studio, and, you know, I don't... I don't usually do it, but toast is kind of a, a special event. Yeah. This looks like a chalkboard. No, actually, um, this is this is stretched canvas, um, and it's it's a very immediate process. Once the paint is applied, I literally have minutes to work, and so I draw back the paint, okay. scrape it off. I do a lot of work in stone, which is very methodical. Uh huh. This lets me clean out my mind. It, it's it's creative immediacy. It's off the top of my head. It's it's whatever is is there comes forward. So this is this is a medium that you're working on right now. Are you are you in the process of working today this minute? I, I am actually um, I have a canvas stretched up and uh, when you guys walked in I was mixing up some paint. If someone is bold enough to venture into an artist space I, I welcome them with open okay. arms. An artist space is really, it's, it's a temple. It's a place where an artist can go and um, connect to the source, whatever that might be. Church is open. Do you have any advice for someone that's buying for the first time? My philosophy is, if you come across a piece and it gives you chills or you just, you, your, your heart feels like it's going to stick to the canvas or to the sculpture, and you have the means, mm -hmm. Bring that into your life. Mm -hmm. Think think about think about how your life will change on a daily basis, living with that piece. Well, I haven't had the opportunity to do this because it changes everything getting to talk to the artist. Having you guys in the studio, it, it's part of the experience. You guys become an evolution mm -hmm. in the piece. It affects it. Right. In this acrylic paint, I'm using three things. I'm using water. I use a matte medium. And uh, I put a retarder in there. These paintings are... are so immediate, but the catch is, if the paint dries, it's done. It's yeah. right. Okay, so he's speeding it up so we can kind of watch him work fast. He just kind of. How did you come up with this form? I I think it's just all one big accident, right? Putting his handprints on, putting her handprints on. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> I don't want to ruin your day. <laughs> Sorry, I like it. Yeah, this is just kind of like a cocktail hug. <laughs> there he is signing it and uh, pretty much uh, done with it. So, um, experience. I think we got a little bit more than we bargained for. <laughs> but keep in mind, 
So that's what it means to be a, uh, a fine artist. A couple words that I want to bring out is he, he's saying, you know, if your heart feels it and, and, and you need to explore it. And, and he's just very much into what does it mean to be, you know, a, tr a high fine artist. And so we just call these guys artists. Um, they were designing a building. Well, um, artists, we'll just stick with that. And uh, that would be, that falls under title. So just go ahead and write the word artist under title. Who do they work for? Well, essentially, <coughs> the fine artist uh, gets to make all the choices. All the decisions are his uh, or hers. They, they get to decide, you know, when they work, how they work, uh, what they make, what media they do. You know, use Slinky for that one piece. And uh, so it's totally up um, to themselves. And so technically they work for themselves. Go ahead and write that down. And, and uh, now I will say this. If you ask them in their head, they're making art for all of us. You know, they're the, all of society. Um, they might be, that's who their art is for. That's the um, big audience that they're thinking about. And uh, it's, it's really quite broad. Um, and the next category I have is where is the art? And um, this is interesting when we get down to illustration and, and um, designing, but um, pretty simple when it comes to fine arts. And uh, I always ask the question, uh, kind of frame it, and if I was going to steal the work of art, where would I go? You know, So if I was going to steal the Mona Lisa, I'd have to go to Paris, France, where it is. Um, and uh, you know, if I print off something off the Xerox machine, or I mean a, a printer off my computer, I haven't stolen that work of art. If I go to the library and find a book with the Mona Lisa and cut it out, I've, I've destroyed a library book, but I haven't gotten the, uh, the Mona Lisa. So where the art is, is the original. And that's true, believe it or not, only for fine arts. And then lastly, I think the biggest question of them all is the uh, goal or, um, you know, what's the goal of the artist? And uh, is their goal, um, and as you could tell, he says, is it's just about his life, um, and life is art, and art is life. And so I've, I've I've broken it down to kind of this phrase right here, to describe beauty or life. That's that's the big goal of fine arts. Now he's allowed to paint anything he wants. He could paint a dog. He could paint a trees. He could paint landscapes. He could people. He could he could paint dead chickens if he wanted to. Um, if dead chickens were a metaphor of his life, then so be it. Um, you know, if, if somehow you can find beauty in a uh, painting of a dead chicken, they might try it. Um, but basically, uh, it's this search for truth and life. Um, so describe beauty and life. And that's it uh, for the fine artists. Um, and I have another video for illustration and designer.